Good Filipino morning to everybody. Derek with Q Adventures here. Thank you for uh, tuning back in. Today we are taking Ken to a uh, doctor appointment to uh, do some uh, examinations and uh, perhaps even a physical to make sure that Ken is fit to fly. Uh, how this came about is um, yesterday we got to meet with uh, JR the owner of JRC Visa Consultancy and Immigration Services. Um, they are pretty well organized and in a very uh, luxurious office space uh, on the sixth floor next to Ayala Mall. And, um, you know, I've heard of them before, but I've never had the opportunity to work with them directly. But I uh, met with JR. JR um, took the time to listen to Ken's story. And despite JRC being a private institution, uh, the man was kind enough to extend us pro bono services so we can go ahead and figure out, you know, like um, Ken's visa overstay situation uh, because JRC does have contacts up in Manila, which is close to the embassies. And um, again, you know, it's just like uh, all those you know, accessing the resources and, you know, going to the embassy and stuff like that, all those require money. But JR was kind enough under humanitarian reasons, you know, like uh, waived all those fees and did it pro bono. And even on top of that, uh, JR sent his personal driver, Lee Mark, <laughs> and his personal car uh, to come pick us up today. So, you know, we don't have to... Um, hail a taxi to take Ken all the way over uh, the bridge to Cebu to uh, see a doctor. And there is a, a doctor that is accustomed to working with the Western clientele uh, that JRC frequents. So I, I, I don't know who the doctor is, but we're on the way there just to make sure that um, uh, everything is uh, check and balance. We're just doing our, just crossing all the T's and dotting all the I's here. And it looks like, and I've informed Ken yesterday, uh, that uh, this process is a little bit bigger mess than what we uh, originally anticipated. So it's going to take approximately one to two months before Ken even has the opportunity to fly home uh, because of the visa overstay situation. Now government institutions are involved and uh, as far as government goes, um, you know, they're a little bit slow moving. You know, uh, all of us are just a number in general and um, not a human being, you know, unless um, something is, that is more dire that, you know, you're barely hanging on by, you know, a thread or whatever, then uh, perhaps they would get involved faster. Uh, but for the meantime, you know, it's just um, uh, just to address a lot of the comments on Ken's video, you know, like the UK embassy or consulate, I apologize, has been notified of Ken and his situation and his condition. Uh, but I was told, uh, I don't know this firsthand, but I was told it's a three to four month queue. And um, based on the situation here, we don't have three to four months. So uh, my intention is to send, you know, to help Ken get back home as soon as possible. So we're doing all the necessary steps right now as it comes up and um, uh, to get Ken home. And I am very fortunate, as small of a channel as I have, I am very fortunate to have two residents in La London living very close to Heathrow Airport that volunteered to be on standby to uh, give Ken's assistant once he arrived at the airport. Pick him up and take him straight to the, the hospital and uh, perhaps even help him navigate through, you know, like the... Uh, hospital system and get uh, a social worker appointed to Ken so he can sort out all that social security and uh, pension um, matters and as well uh, we may or may not be facing well it, right now we are facing uh, over a hundred thousand pesos in Ken's um, visa overstay penalties uh, but you know I was again fortunate enough to uh, have a subscriber who has, you know, to, who I believe is a CEO, Stacy, uh, is a CEO of uh, a few charitable organization in Scotland there. 
and uh, she had reached out through my messenger and um, indicated to me that she has a few government contacts uh, within the UK uh, government system and uh, she's pulling her strings and trying to uh, work some magic to bypass that maybe you know if we're lucky enough well, we would get some kind of deferment on the um, visa overstay penalties or, you know, like uh, under humanitarian or health reasons, you know, get it uh, perhaps even waived. Uh, so we don't know, you know, it's a very early stages. It's going to take a little bit of time, but um, uh, as it sounds, you know, it's just a lot shorter than the three to four month queue straight through the um, UK embassy. So consulate i apologize and um we're on our way to see the doctor so just to make sure that ken is uh stabilized you know he has been eating meat protein a lot lately uh we have every other day or you know every three days or something like that gave uh, bernadetta some money so um she can buy meat products to add to um the meal uh, whether it's fish, you know, she decides what, what, what kind of protein product to buy. Um, I'm not a dietitian, neither am I uh, too aware of, you know, like uh, nutrition, nutritional stuff. So uh, I let, you know, I just supply the uh, finances and um, Bernadetta, you know, goes um, to buy the products and prepare it. So we're on our way. Check in with you guys later. So we're like third hour into this uh, doctor uh, appointment for Ken it's just uh, we're just surrounded by you know Changhua and uh, middle of Cebu here and uh, Ken is in there currently getting his uh, blood drawn and uh, this is so outside my just so outside my element you know even when I was in that accident you know it's just um, I was very reluctant to be in hospital environments and stuff like that it's just way outside my comfort zone uh while i was in there you know like uh, i helped uh, um i assisted with you know like standing ken there to get his uh, chest x-ray he's getting his blood drawn now so um i just had to leave the hospital i'm just not accustomed to being around those kind of environment and um you know with the pain and you know the visual of pain and blood and stuff like that it's just um it gets me very uncomfortable so we're just gonna wait here and now uh, meanwhile you know while i was in there waiting for ken you know i was responding to a lot of um comments on ken's uh, original video uh indicating that it's a very simple process you know just get them to the embassy and you know like um contact the embassy and the embassy will take care of everything it's not that simple uh the uk consulate was already contacted and um, I wasn't involved, this is before I met Ken, but um, you know, I was told that, you know, it's a three to four month queue, uh, which I personally feel that it's not, you know, Ken's, um, you know, he doesn't have that time. So it's not that simple, it's never that simple. You know, it's just like the, um, ever since, you know, we did the, the first update, you know, there was a lot of, um, curveballs thrown at us but you know like we have things under control and these kids are <laughs> they were eating there the, that kid was uh curious and he ran away because he's shy getting back to my point you know it's just it's never that simple uh curveballs were thrown at us and you know we're doing our best to mitigate it and uh we have you know like our original video caught the attention of, you know, like a few, um, you know, high rank charitable, you know, organization people, as well as, you know, people with uh, government influence that had volunteered to step in and, you know, making uh, phone calls and stuff like that. So things are in the work and we are just dotting our I's and crossing our T's over here to make sure that Ken is flipped fit enough to fly and that he's not going to be turned down by you know an airline after we spend the money and invest the money to uh, get him the flight ticket so you know please bear with us you know like um, uh, this process is going to be prolonged you know for another month or so so you know like I will do periodic updates 
but um, it's not as simple as con contacting the, uh, the the embassy or the consulate, which has already been done. So you know, like uh, the redundancy of me responding to these simple, you know, like uh, um, answers, you know, it's just not the way to go. And then also, you know, like uh, JRC, who has resources and uh, important contacts within, you know, like uh, the embassies and consulates there in Manila had volunteered to do, you know, to, to get involved pro bono to expedite the process. But nevertheless, there, you know, there's a process that needs to be done. So we're getting this done. And, um, you know, we're, you know, like the, the last few days, you know, we've been investing our time, you know, like to, to get this done. So, you know, like uh, two days ago, we went to JRC trying to, you know, like, um, articulate our case uh jr wasn't there so you know like we had to go home but that was like that in itself was a four hour ordeal because we live across the bridge in maribago whereas jrc is uh deep in uh cebu close to uh ayala and then um from that you know four hour investment of our time you know it wasn't um successful and then we were you know and then we went back yesterday uh, with JR being present, that was another four hour production. And uh, fortunately though, JR um, just took about five, 10 minutes, you know, to, to review our case and uh, extended the courtesy of a pro bono, you know, like a uh, um, service. So, uh, and then immediately today, you know, like less than 24 hours, he was able to send a car to, uh, with a personal driver to take Ken and set up all these appointments and um, uh, with his resources, we were able to skip all the line and get everything done, you know, like uh, expedite it quickly. And um, here we are, you know, it's just like, I'm just uncomfortable with the blood and stuff like that. So well, we're just out here doing the, the update because um, I don't want to turn on my camera in the middle of the hospital. There's a level of privacy that I need to respect, uh, but we're just waiting for it to be done, grab some lunch and we'll be done for the day. So uh, I'll turn back the camera when we're in the car when it's not that noisy. So after a three hour ordeal, we're done. Ken is at my house right now. <laughs> he said he uh, haven't had bacon for a long time. For how many years, Ken? Many? More than five years. More than five years. So uh, we happen to have some honey smoked bacon at home and um, uh, we don't have enough, but you know, we made some uh, simple bacon and um, egg rolls so Ken can uh, have lunch. There was a little miscommunication uh, that, you know, anyway, we didn't have enough for all of us, so um, sent the, the, the two young girls out to uh, get the order some food. So instead of having Ken wait, so he's uh, just eating his bacon and egg rolls. So uh, he got some blood drawn some x-rays um, just to get everything in the process the result the lab results will be uh, will not be ready for another few days so later we're gonna go ahead and do some shopping and uh, Ken just told me that he doesn't have um, access to fruit so we're gonna get some fruit and vegetables to add to his diet uh, drop it off with uh, Bernadetta later uh, as we will go fruit shopping for ourselves but meanwhile uh, for those who are just, you know, like simplifying the process, you know, like uh, on the comment section, uh, it's never that simple, you know, there's uh, curveballs that were thrown at us and uh, government officials and embassies and stuff like that. Uh, as nice of an idea that it is, you know, in practice, um, you know, I personally feel and my personal opinion is just, we're just a, a, a number. We're just a number in line, you know, so we have to take this into our own hands and do as uh, much as we possibly can to expedite the process. If you want the, you know, things to be done your way, you, you need to take it upon yourself to get it done. And as far as um, Social Security and pension and stuff like that, uh, Ken is a, a UK citizen. He resided in the United States. Are you even a US citizen? Are you a dual citizen, Ken? Okay. No, right? Not, not not U.S. Not U.S. You were just a legal resident there who worked there for for many years. I was a, a, a green card. You had a green card, exactly. So um, you know, like 
a lot of you said uh, to get the U.S. Uh, embassy involved. You know, the U.S. embassy is not going to get involved because he's not a U.S. citizen. Uh, although he, do, you know, he does have an entitlement to Social Security benefits because he worked there for so many years and he's paid into the system. I but need, need to get that. yeah, we'll get that figured out, Ken. Really? Yeah, we'll get that figured out because at first, you know, my intention was to get you home as quickly as possible, you know, and we have the finances to to get you home but now that the curveballs are throwing at you know like uh when you told us about your overstay visa and i was able to you know like get a visual of your last visa renewal which is in 2020 you know i understand that covid happened and you're like at a uh, uh a high risk age range and stuff like that go ahead yeah and your accident you know your medical attention and stuff like that so you let the you know like the the, the visa expired and it's been two years which is a big deal f to the Filipino immigration. So we're just trying to mitigate that and, you know, overcome that now, uh, which will, you know, like um, uh, put a hinder on the timeline on when you, you, you can go back. But it's still, you know, like after talking to JR, uh, the, the owner of JRC Immigration Services, he's giving a timeline of one month to 90 days. I'm sorry, not 90 days, one month to one and a half months. So, you know, like, um, but still, that is just an estimate, you know, like, I am the type of person that I don't believe anything until it happens, <laughs> until after the fact, uh, but it's still a lot better than the three to four month timeline that you told me uh, what the UK consulate uh, uh, have imposed on you guys. So, you know, like, um, regardless of what it is, you know, whatever the obstacle is, we'll jump the hurdles together. And um, for me, as a 45 year old man, uh, you know, like I am pretty oblivious to all these, you know, like um, embassy process, social security, pension, because, you know, it's just like I, I'm not looking forward to that at my age, you know, so I don't have any experience with that. And I don't want to pretend to know something that I don't. So um, and for go ahead. I desperately need that social security. That, that's nine hundred and. $29 a month. A month. Yeah, I understand that. And th that's the, the next point that I was going to say. Now that, you know, like uh, the, the process of you going home is prolonged to a month, then let me go ahead and do some research on my computer and see what I can do, you know, without being too in invasive or intrusive into your personal information. And um, um, I'll talk to my, you know, like uh, a few people I know that is very, you know, like um, uh, familiar with the social security system and get some advice and wisdom from there. So, you know, I'm not going into it blindly. Yeah. So just be patient and we'll we'll tackle that, you know, situation so you can have access to some of your money uh, benefits uh, while we're waiting for JRC and, you know, like uh, Stacy in Scotland to contact the uh, U.S. I'm sorry, the UK um, government officials. But you were going to say? Well, right now, the source of security in in America owes me almost ten thousand. Yeah, of course, and we'll we'll see. You know, like uh, we'll look into it. Let me find out all the facts. You know, and the process, and then I'll help you look into it to see how we can get access to that. Now that we have some time to look into it, you know, uh, because originally, you know, like. In my mind, you would be already home by this point. But, you know, since you told me about the uh, overstay and stuff like that, I'm fortunate that we did not, you know, like uh, buy you that ticket. Otherwise, we would have wasted that money on the one-way ticket and you would have been turned away by immigration at the airport. So, you know, like uh, I'm fortunate that, you know, it, what happened happened and, you know, like we're more informed now. At least, you know, we know how to tackle the situation. Meanwhile, though, I want you to eat, focus on eating so you don't choke by accident. I'm going to go ahead and tune out here. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I like your smile. And by the way, you know, like you look a lot healthier. Like we were navigating through the hospital today and you were climbing up the stairs. Your, I'm building up. Yeah, your cognitive health is a lot, has a lot of improvement. And also today, I want to make an emphasis that you know, like uh, at the, the hospital, you know, like we were climbing those stairs. You were climbing those stairs. So you're a lot more mobile. 
yeah. uh, than when I first met you. So that, that, that's a, a good thing, you know. So uh, we'll, we'll get this done, you know, like uh, to everybody who is asking, you know, Ken is still here in the Philippines and he's looking to be here for another month, month and a half uh, at minimum. And um, again, you know, we don't know. These are just um, uh, the projections. So, but meanwhile, though, you know, like uh, I have been giving Bernadetta money for, you know, meat products. I did not know that you didn't have access to, you know, like uh, fruits and vegetables. But, you know, we will personally buy that and personally bring it over since you're just a few buildings down. Okay? Yes. Thank you so much. Oh, stop thanking me, Ken. <laughs> I told Ken earlier, jokingly, you know, like he kept, you know, like uh, nonstop thanking me. But I, I told him earlier that don't thank me yet. We, nothing has been done yet. I told him that he's more than welcome to call me from London after the fact and thank me. And I'll accept his thank you then. <laughs> but uh, for the meantime, we're just going with the flow, uh, going with the motion and just hope uh, that we get everything done the way that it's supposed to be done correctly without taking any loopholes or taking any risk and stuff like that uh but you know I'll, I'll give everybody else an update and follow up once your lab result is back uh without getting into too much details you know i just uh want to give everybody an update whether he has a thumbs up or thumbs down as far as being fit to fly okay and then we'll, we'll work on your social security okay meanwhile you just eat okay ken and um uh, thank you everybody for tuning into my channel and your continued support on my channel. And um, I don't know, I'm gonna leave the naysayers and the trolls alone on this one. But uh, <laughs> uh, thank you everybody for uh, being supportive. And this is the most current up to date uh, with Ken. And with Ken, with Ken's video, I always uh, try to edit, you know, all the ums and ms uh, quickly and upload instantly you know i don't take too much time in between you know so i try to keep it as current as possible so um until next time guys derek out <laughs>